Tiki Mori Sanchez Security is one of the most anticipated anime in this upcoming season. With over 160,000 people putting it on their plan to watch list, which let's be honest, you probably have a collection in there. Oh, with so many people ready to check it out, I wanted to answer one question. Is Tiki Mori Sanchez Security overrated? So before going through the manga, let's get into a little synopsis. Tiki Mori seems like the perfect girlfriend. Cute, fun to be around, sweet when she wants to be, but she has a cool dark side that comes out under the right circumstances. And if you were expecting more, yes, that's the whole plot. First, let's go through the art. The art was absolutely fantastic in this series. Compared to the two trailers, that we've seen so far, their art style and character design is absolutely amazing in the manga. While yes, I understand you have to simplify the art style that the mangaka has in the manga to turn it into an anime format, it's still way, way more impressive in the manga. Now, in my opinion, this series is more of a brainless reader watch. Compared to what the trailer is advertising, the anime series depends a lot on how the animation studio fills in the gaps within the series. Because every single chapter is something new, it's not like it has a pretty understandable storyline, it's just something new every single time and makes it more of a gag manga than anything. But to just give you some examples chapter 4 we are on a movie date and then chapter 5 PE class chapter 6 we get backstory on their relationship and how they got together chapter 7 is their first Christmas date so there isn't really much pacing within the series it's just chapter to chapter new things happen now, if you're expecting this series to have the complexities of a relationship you're gonna be severely disappointed the art is absolutely fantastic but the story is mostly just encapsulating the wholesome slash sweet moments within a relationship rather than showing the complexities within it such as arguments hobbies etc these things are rarely gonna be shown in the series the anime is just going to be highlighting most of the wholesome moments within the series unless the animation studio decides to go on anime only round. And the thing is, I feel like a lot of people are going to get bored really fast because every single chapter has a template. Intro, conflict, resolution, and then finally Izumi says my girlfriend is so blank. But this template makes the series extremely boring and it's honestly surprising to me how many people are ready to watch this. Now let's go to the characters. Izumi, our first main character, he's shy, he gets hurt a lot, and to keep it nice and simple, he's just a And he makes this series much more frustrating to watch. Hikimori herself is the most dynamic character within this series. Yeah, she has the template of most of the times being solved, but then turns into this absolute badass, but she's still surprisingly the most dynamic character in the series. As far as side characters, the mangaka makes it extremely clear that we don't have to care about these characters. As in chapter 16, the mangaka, instead of giving the parents actual names, he calls Izumi's parents Mama Izumi and Papa Izumi, which makes it extremely clear that most of these characters don't matter when you couldn't even give a name to the parents of our main character. And I don't know if it's just me, but that might be the bare minimum when it comes to coming up with a character. But out of the 50 chapters that I read, the only proper side characters that get introduced to the series are Shui, Yui, and Toru. Which they get introduced at the same time in the same page, which I don't know if it's just me, that just makes the names extremely forgettable when you introduce three characters at the same time. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I stopped taking notes on the chapters after chapter 25. And that's mostly because I started seeing the template and I started getting bored of the template that this series has. While yes, I enjoy some wholesome moments, but when the whole series is literally wholesome and there's barely any conflicts within the relationship, I mean, it generally makes it hard to enjoy when the only gimmick this series has is the wholesome moment. Hey, editing quick here, just as a quick example, in my dress of darling, the reason people enjoy the wholesome moments is because Gojo did something to earn it, whether it be finishing Chizuku Tan's cosplay or going to the beach with Mari. These moments are amazing because Gojo did something to cause the wholesome moment. But currently, with the highly competitive season that this is gonna be with Spy X Family, Kaguya Samuel Elvis Ward, Don San Sansior, and so many other amazing series coming out in the same season, I personally think this series isn't even the best romance that's coming out. Well, yes, we have Don San a sewer that has aspects of romance and we have Spike's family that has a little bit of romance implications within it. Compared to the other romances coming out such as Kaguya Samulova's War, I don't think this even has a chance. And even the smaller series such as Love After World Domination and a couple of cuckoos, which personally I didn't like but I can see the appeal, has a way bigger chance of impressing people not because of the animation, not because of the amazing art within the manga or the anime, but because the story is much more dynamic than just wholesome moment after wholesome moment. Now this is my personal prediction for how the anime season is gonna go for this anime. Since I was able to get through 50 chapters of the series, I think the first three episodes are pretty much guaranteed for people to watch. After that though, I can see a lot of people dropping it simply because the story and the gimmick is very repetitive. But the fact that 160,000 people already added it to their plan to watch list makes me believe that these people got clickbaited by the trailers. Which, to be completely fair, they look absolutely fantastic. I feel like the story itself is going to cause for the anime to fall off quite quickly and it's mostly depending on how the art and the animation is going to look. Does that sound familiar to you? And since I brought it up, Demon Slayer has a budget of the gods and also the animation of the god. But this isn't exactly getting anime by Studio Mappa, Cloverworks, UFO Table, or any big name studio for it to be 100% able to carry itself only because of the animation. Now, although yes, I spent 90% of this video bashing Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie, but I still have hope that the anime will be done well. Because the animation studio animating this animated stuff such as Gabriel Dropout, Maru Chan, Plastic Memories, New Game, and many more. Which honestly makes Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie a perfect fit for what this studio makes. Although I don't recommend reading the manga for its story, I still recommend it for its wholesome moments.
and if you like it being done every time. So I just finished watching the first anime episode. It was honestly pretty good. If I was to rate it, I would give it a 7.8 out of 10. And to keep it nice and simple, the anime studio recovered a lot of the gaps in the series. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about Chiki Mori's Not Just a Cutie. And yeah, pussy. Oh, I forgot to answer the initial question. Yes.